Hello everybody and welcome back to my Let's Play of Dragon Age Origins. We are currently... Let's go back to the journal here. What are we doing? We're going back to the Isle of Redcliffe. Now I'm not sure how long. I may have to split up the next few, few smaller missions. Uh, just because I've been a yes. little under the weather. Yes. Indeed. Blood and damnation. Yes. Sorry. I understand you've acquired all the allies you could. That's good. We can call the Landsmeet if you are ready. I would prefer not giving Logain time to consider, but it is up to you. I do not wish to go to Denerim unless you are with me. Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. I shall make the arrangements. Let us be off to Denerim, and may the Maker watch over us. There's a lot to do in Denerim. Denerim is the heart and soul of Ferelden. It was the city of King Kalanhad, the birthplace of Andraste. As stubborn as a Mabari, and as good to have on your side. If we defeat Loghain here, the rest of the nation will follow us. By calling the Landsmeet, I've struck the first blow. The advantage for the moment is ours. He will have little choice but to show himself, to oppose us directly. He will strike back at us. The only question that remains is how soon. Logan, this is an honor that the Regent would find time to greet me personally. How could I not welcome a man so important as to call every lord in Ferelden away from his estates? while a blight claws at our land. The blight is why I'm here. With Caelan dead, Ferelden must have a king to lead it against the Darkspawn. Ferelden has a strong leader. It's queen. And I lead her armies. And who is this, Seaman? Some new stray you picked up on the road? And here I thought it was only royal bastards you play the nursemaid to, not wild elves. Well, you're admitting the royal part. That's a start. You have my sympathies on what happened to your order. It is unfortunate that they chose to turn against Ferelden. You should curb your tongue. This is my city, and no safe place to speak treason for anyone. There is talk that your illness left you feeble, Eamon. Some worry that you may no longer be fit to advise Ferelden. Illness? Why not call your poison by its true name? Not everyone at the Landsmeet will cast aside their loyalties as easily as you and these sycophants. How long you've been gone from court, Eamon? Don't you recognize Rendon Howe, Arl of Amaranthine, and Terran of High Ever? And current Arl of Denerim, since Urien's unfortunate fate at Ostagar. The Regent has been generous to those who prove loyal. Oh. Don't 
won't interrupt, Churl. Your betters are talking. Enough, Carthian. This is not the time or place. I had hoped to talk you down from this rash course, Eamon. Our people are frightened. Our king is dead. Our land is under siege. We must be united now if we are to endure this crisis. Your own sister, Queen Rowan, fought tirelessly to see Ferelden restored. But you see her work destroyed? You divide our nation and weaken our efforts against the Blight. Your selfish ambitions to the throne. I should put my faith in untried foreign hands. Do you think I'm blind? Kalen depended on the Grey Warden's prowess against the Darkspawn, and look how well that ended. Let us speak of reality rather than tall tales. Stories will not save us. I cannot forgive what you've done, Logan. Perhaps the Maker can, but not I. Our people deserve a king of the Theron bloodline. Alistair will be the one to lead us to victory in this blight. Oh, is that all I have to do? <laughs> no pressure. The Emperor of Orlais also thought I could not bring him down. Expect no more mercy than I showed him. There is nothing I would not do for my homeland. Well, that was bracing. I didn't expect Loghain to show himself quite so soon. My sister married King Merrick while he was still in exile. At that time, he and Loghain were inseparable. A wild prince who'd never seen the inside of a castle and a farmer's son. When Loghain joined Merrick's rebels, he was just a raw-boned boy. But he got on one knee to swear that he would see Ferelden free or die trying. made us a free people once more. You can't know what it was like to grow up as a vassal in your own land, while poncy little Orlesians minced around in their silks. I would never have believed you would do anything but what was best for Ferelda. We need eyes and ears in the city. Loghain has been here for months. The roots of all his schemes must begin here. The sooner we find them, the better we can turn them to our advantage. Go have a look around, and see what you can turn up. Better yet, find the nobles who have arrived for the landsmate. Test the waters. See how many will support us. When you're ready to talk strategy, come upstairs to my sitting room. We can lay out our plans for the landsmate then. If I was this shale of House Kadash, as Caridan said, there must be some evidence of my existence remaining. I must find it. There is another way. What Caridan said, it has allowed me to remember one thing. I believe I know where Kadash Taig is. Offer is appreciated. I will mark the location on its map. If we can journey there soon, I am most curious as to what we will find. Probably won't, but you know. You know, I could get to like this. The last time I came to Denerim, I stayed at an inn so filthy the bedbugs had fleas. What say you?
by all means. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this for Elden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Every land has its assassins. Some are simply more open about their business than others. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Ah, yes, of course. The wandering life of the Dalish. That truly is better. I'm jealous. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. <sighs> oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden? A woman who then spares my life? I could not. I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? I'm not sure that that's the route I would take, were I to continue old habits, but as you wish. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Oh. Oh, shit! This is a nice change from having to sleep in the woods, isn't it? Something I can help with? Denerim is Ferelden's most important city, yes? This is the seat of power, the jewel in the crown of the king. She is Ferelden's heart. Her walls are strong, but within them lies so much beauty, just like the country and the people. I hope all the accommodations are to your liking, Warden. Please let me know if Go anything away. is troubling you. So many visitors, so many chamber pots to clean. Oh, if they... Everybody else at. <clears throat> oh. I got a moment. Hey, sure. What about? All right. Hi. All right then.
Excuse me, I have to dust the Isle's sitting room. The Chamberlain disapproves of us. If Lady Isolde hadn't brought me into this household from Redcliffe last year, I'd never have been given a place. I beg your pardon, sir, but I really can't be seen standing about. The housekeeper will have my head. Good day. Ah, Warden. I trust you've made yourself comfortable. Good, because it's likely to be your last rest for a while. This is Elena. She's... I am Queen Enora's handmaiden. She sent me here to ask for your help. Or perhaps the young lady prefers to speak for herself. The Queen. She is in... A difficult position. She loved her husband, no? And trusted her father to protect him. When he returned with no king and only dark rumors, what is she to think? She worries, no? But when she tries to speak with him, he does not answer. He tells her not to trouble herself. My queen suspects she cannot trust her father. And Logan, he is very subtle, no? But Rand and Hal, he is privy to all the secrets and not so subtle. So she goes to Hal. A visit from the Queen to the new Isle of Denum is only a matter of courtesy. And she demands answers. He calls her every sort of name. Traitor being the kindest. He blocks her in a guest room. I think her life is in danger. I heard Hal say she would be a greater ally dead than alive, especially if her death could be blamed on Al Eno. We may have no choice but to trust Anora. The Queen is well loved. If Loghain succeeded in pinning her death on me, I'm not sure that's a risk we can afford to take. I have some uniforms. I'll have, have so many new girls every day. A few more will not cause much stir. I will show you to the servants and friends. We must slip in and out with my queen before anyone is the wiser. I will go ahead to house estate. Meet me there as soon as you can. Oh, it's absolutely a trap. Just, you know. If one more servant asks if I would like a change of clothes, I will set the house on fire. I await your command. <laughs> At times, perhaps, a world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Don't be foolish. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. She was not. Flemeth was 
furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The Darkspawn are yet undefeated. No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place in its reality. This is not as defensible as I would like, but it will do. What is your wish, Kadan? I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. That is complicated. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the Darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I am told no others survived. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke, I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. I searched for it, and when that failed, I asked my rescuers what had become of it. I killed them with my bare hands. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. I know I cannot justify what I have done. My honor is forfeit. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Anton. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. I'm sure that comforts the farmers. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Near Lake Callan. I already found it. Oh my god. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. Oh, is this like, okay? Like the fuck? Give me the map. Where's fucking Alistair? There's Wynn. Where's Alistair? Okay, he's in there. I didn't see him in there. Why did I not see him in there? I haven't been here in a while. They've changed the dining room. Ask away. Of course. You never asked? Hmm. 
No, please don't think. <sighs> what the fuck, computer? Really, this is. I hate this kind of thing. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then after the battle, when I should have told you, I, I don't know. It seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? I... I should have told you, anyway. It was important for you to know. I guess part of me liked you not knowing. They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them, instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it, but I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. For all the good it does me, my blood seems certain to haunt me no matter what I do. And now Arleman plans to put me forward as the heir. It never ends, does it? For what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. I... I guess I was just hoping that you would like me for who I am. I do! It's a dumb thing to do. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. No, I'm not done talking to you. I haven't been here in a while. They changed They've them. Changed they the really? Ask away. Of course. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. It's really for the best. I'm not exactly the Chantry type, if you haven't noticed. I don't think I would have made a very good Templar. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. Oh, I suppose the Chantry life is good enough for some. Here, we have the chance to fight against the Blight. To actually do some good instead of sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would Play never... down. I wouldn't have. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much, I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. No, oh, my poor Alistair. I think Lynn's down here somewhere, right there. This is a nice estate, isn't it? What's on your mind? Hmm. Is something troubling you? No one said it would be easy. You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us, and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. And that gives me hope. All right, let's see where's the journal. I guess we're gonna have to do that. 
I'm not gonna do that right now. Like I said the, earlier, not been feeling all that great, so I kind of got to do this in short bursts. So this is gonna be the end of this session. Uh, hopefully, after I get some rest, I'll be back and we'll rescue the queen. Alright, so I do want to thank those of you who joined this session today and are watching. Make sure you're subscribed for future, future episodes. And I uh, hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day and we will see you all again soon.